What's in this library? It's just a tip of the iceberg. This library Multicultural Center was founded in 1982 by Nina Parker and her mother. It started in the basement of the Mason Chapel AME Church here in Finley, Ohio. And it started with one book that her mother gave her and it's grown into volumes of books and tapes that number in the thousands. The original focus was on educating black youth so that they had an appreciation and an understanding of their cultural heritage and for the non-minority students to have an understanding and appreciation of the heritage and the contributions of black people to American history. Nina grew up here from a child and she experienced the black students would be looked upon to ask the questions that were being discussed whenever they would discuss black history. And that was a burden that she saw that she didn't handle well. So she decided to start the library rather than moving her children out to where they would be in a more diverse environment, she decided to change the environment that she grew up in. And that was why they started the library. I think the thing that's, that's impacted me the most is, you know, I've become more educated. You know, you think that you know things about your culture until you come to a place like this and you start reading and you find out that there's a lot you don't know. You find out the truths. You know, you grow up and you've been told things down through the years and, and it's been etched in stone because it's never been challenged. When you come into a place like this, all of those truths and half-truths become challenged. This is educational to the youth at the, at the lowest level. As we educate the youth, they in turn educate their family members and their friends. How I've grown with the Black Heritage Library and Multicultural Center is through community development. It's important for humans at any age to be exposed to any type of culture so we can understand people and have a different perspective. We are here to promote growth in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we have art artifacts from over 50 countries from around the world. You can start in the corner here and you see pictures and art from the African diaspora. We deal with the Underground Railroad, which is, Finley had a very instrumental part in the Underground Railroad, so we teach on that during the year. Then you go through the Civil War period when you look at the back of the room. Local piece of art there of the portrait of Abraham Lincoln that was done by a local artist. And then we deal with the Harlem Renaissance. And all these pieces were either purchased over the years by the library staff or donated. One of my favorites sits up here in the back corner is a young lady, a local young lady, and she's looking through a mask which with a picture of the world behind her. And what that symbolizes is she's looking at her ancestors, the world, through that mask that she has in front of her. This museum, this library, functions as kind of that mask that people come in and you're able to see things that you haven't been exposed to before. It's a place that people can learn about black history. We don't have a lot of that around here. And I want people to see that, that they can learn and see what happened, like what happened to Rosa Parks, what happened to Martin Luther King, all the other stuff that happened during history, we can teach about this. I've been to programs here where there were round table discussions, and that's where you really get educated on what's out there, what's available, what you didn't know. 
the dialogue is, it's raw. And when you come into those, those discussions, you have to have thick skin, but you also have to have an open heart and an open mind. And with that open heart and open mind, you blossom, you grow. You know, I always say that we learn every day. When you stop learning, you die. Sarika's artwork, as you can see, is extremely colorful, it's joyful, it's positive. That's no mistake because she is also an extremely positive, uplifting person. My name is Sarika Unique and I'm an artist, illustrator, surface pattern designer. Sarika Unique, Unique is my middle name, so um, my mom thought my first name was so creative that she was like, oh, that's Unique, so I'm gonna name her Sarika Unique. So I thought it would be perfect and fitting for my um, brand as well. <laughs> I've always had a passion for painting. When I would see them, I kind of just light up and you can just kind of feel it inside of you. Like when I'm on Instagram or if I'm at a museum and I see certain paintings and the way they use color and everything, I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. But in my mind, I was just like, oh, I'm a designer, I don't need to do that. But I mean, who's to say that you can't try or you can't change your path on what you want to do? I used to doodle all the time. So I think a lot of it, came from there because my play with doodle when I'm in class, I would go to conferences and I would just sit and doodle the whole time. Um, and I think that translates kind of to my paintings as well. Just kind of being free and flowing and just doing whatever feeling comes out for me, you know, just putting that on the canvas. I still didn't consider myself an artist. I was like, yeah, I'm a designer, I'm an illustrator, you know, I don't do paint and all that stuff. So, but then I kept getting this calling in my mind that just was like, just paint, just paint, just paint. So eventually I gave in, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna paint a little bit here and there. And once I started painting, I just couldn't stop. I, I feel that Sarika's artwork is spiritual. We both, you know, our believers in a greater presence, and we both um, channel that into our artwork, but in different ways. And I think that's the beauty of art, that you can both be inspired by something very similar and yet come full circle with something that is so different. My friend Lauren Magda, oh my gosh, so we met on Clubhouse when everything was kind of shut down and I think I was on stage one day and I said something about Ypsilanti and she's like Ypsilanti I'm an Ypsilanti and so then she messaged me and then we started talking and we met up we we bonded over bright colors and the, the common ground of Ypsilanti and graphic design because she also has a graphic design background as well she went to CCS there in Michigan I would describe Sarika's artwork as like a color explosion of joy and optimism and peace at the same time all rolled up into one. Well, my favorite color that you'll probably see appear in most of my paintings is pink and turquoise. Like, I try to do a painting without pink sometimes and it's just like, eh, it needs a little pink. Like, <laughs> or even turquoise. Turquoise is my top favorite color and I think the two complement each other pretty well. You probably see turquoise with, around my house everywhere. <laughs> like, definitely turquoise. <laughs> I have my um, artwork printed on pillows. There's some blankets on my couches that have my artwork on there. There's pouches on my desk that has my artwork. I currently have a collaboration going on with um, Geometry, which is a um, eco-friendly based tile company. They're made out of recycled plastic bottles. So I think that's really cool. And I have a collaboration with them now, so you can see my patterns there as well. Um, with surface pattern design, I just kind of love to see my artwork on things that, tangible things that people can have in their everyday lives where it's a little 
accessory like a little pouch you can carry with you or your phone case um, you can have like a little bit of happy with you in your pocket you know Sarika's artwork as you can see is extremely colorful it's joyful it's positive and that's no mistake because she is also an extremely positive uplifting person So I started the hashtag and then I started the Instagram account and then it just, the community kind of just built from there. And less than a year, I was up to about 30,000 followers and I was like, whoa, like this just kind of started as a passion project. Want to see your favorite local story featured on our show? Head to our website at wpgu.org slash scenic stops. Find the blue button and let us know where we should go next. So Black Girls Illustrated, I started a couple years ago, I say about 2019. When I was in illustration and surface pattern design, I didn't really see anybody that looked like me. There's maybe like maybe one or two other people that I would come across. And when we'd see each other, like, oh my God, you're doing the same thing. You like what I like? So it was very exciting, but I knew there were a lot of other people and a lot of other talented illustrators and artists out there. Um, and I wanted to connect with them. And because I'm on Instagram all the time, I searched the hashtag Black Girls Illustrate and I didn't really find anything. So I was like, why is this not a thing? There's a lot of Black Girls Illustrators. <laughs> so I started the hashtag and then I started the Instagram account. And then it just, the community kind of just built from there. And less than a year, I was up to about 30,000 followers. And I was like, whoa, like this just kind of started as a passion project. I think it's really important to have the Black Girl Illustrate platform just because there's lots of people who want to support Black artists. They don't know where, where to find them. And then there's a lot of artists who don't know how to get their artwork seen or they're somewhere where they don't have support or don't have people around them or they don't see anyone that looks like them that are doing the same thing so they're not sure if it's possible. It's not an easy life path to be an artist and especially a full-time artist. There's a lot of sacrifices involved and there's a lot of unknowns and so I think being genuinely supportive and in a supportive environment of other creatives is extremely helpful. In the future is something I want to work on to offer resources for artists to help them build their careers and connect with each other. I would love to have like community meetups or you know retreats where they can come to and just gather together, trade ideas. It's really important I think to have other artists and illustrators around you. Uh, when people see my artwork, I want them to feel happy, excited, joy. I love when I do shows and a kid will walk by and they're just standing there looking at everything and they're like, this makes me so happy. That's the main thing I get from people in public when I do shows. They're like, this just makes me so happy. <laughs> and I love that I can translate that in my work to help uplift other spirits. I think that her personality translates so well into her artwork and it really does uplift others. I have a print of hers in my house and it just brings me such joy when I look at it and I know that that's what it does for other people too. It's crazy to think that I'm someone's favorite artist, <laughs> but I think that I think that's pretty cool. I think if I can inspire other people or spark some sense of joy um, or bring something to them, li their lives that add to them in some kind of way, I think that's amazing. And it actually inspires me to keep going. Cause you know, I have days where I'm just like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> but the fact that it does inspire others or um, that I see a kid that's like, wow, I could do this too. Um, that definitely gives me a little kick in the butt that can help me to keep going. We're at the Dairy Learning Center, which is open to the public, located on a real working dairy farm. Our family has been grain farming here in Mercer County for over 100 years, so this is where our base of, of farm ground is at in our community.
We're at the Dairy Learning Center, which is open to the public, located on a real working dairy farm. MVP Dairy is two uh, fourth generation farmers that uh, created a partnership here to create MVP Dairy. Our family has been grain farming here in Mercer County for over 100 years, so this is where our base of, of farm ground is at in our community. We started the Learning Center in 2019, or we're going to average probably about 20,000 people a year coming through our Learning Center. to create a space that can kind of walk you through those steps from soil to yogurt cup. We felt the need to uh, help educate our community about how farming is these days. People can come in and watch actually a soil simulation wall that shows you what's going on in our fields depending on the time of year. So as the grain farmer side, we grow all the crops, or pretty much all the crops that feed the cows and then we use regenerative farming practices to turn around and reutilize those nutrients to uh, grow next year's crop. We ship about uh, 45 to 47,000 gallons of milk uh, to our customer every day. We milk about 3,900 dairy cows here on a carousel style milking parlor that anyone can come in and check out from our viewing deck. But it's, it's just a giant merry-go-round essentially for cows that you know, it takes about eight minutes from the time they step on to the time they get off. have interactive displays that kind of walk you through the day in the life of a cow, but if you're part of a scheduled group, you do get to go through our barns with the help of a shuttle. We create an open house here for people to come from the public in to view our cows. So on the second floor, you're going to get a closer look at how we care for our cows and calves. We take care of them in the animal welfare and health department, you know, making sure that they, if they have a sore foot or anything like that, just need a, a pedicure, a nail trimming, we can handle that uh, in the back on our trim chute. Once they're back in their pen, they're free to roam about that pen and do just as they would choose to. So also on the second floor, you're gonna learn a little bit more about how we identify our cows. So each cow has a special earring or a number that will be in her ear, but then we also use activity trackers or monitors around their collars. Um, we can track each individual cow and how much milk she gives on a daily basis. And we also use uh, our milk meter for conductivity so that we can sense any abnormalities in that milk and take care of that cow. One of the most common questions that we get here at the dairy are the colors on the backs of the cows. We use pink, green, blue, or orange to organize the cows by what they eat. Our cows are in different groups according to age and lactation, and then we can feed those cows accordingly for each one of their needs. I mean, it's great for kids to hear, come through here, um, understand what it takes to, to actually get a cup of yogurt. You know, everything from uh, soil health all the way through a cup. We're proud to be fourth generation farmers here in Mercer County that have opened our, door, our doors here with our learning center to, to invite in our community or anybody that's willing to learn. We've made a commitment to allow um, our community members as well as travelers passing down the road to come in and see what we're doing. The importance of having mascots at these games, they are really there to create that experience, that fun environment. And I think without them there, there wouldn't be that same energy and same excitement at each and every game. The mascots that represent our brand. On the walleye side, we have Spike and Catrick, uh, his feline friend. On the mud hen side, we have Muddy the mud hen and his female friend, Madonna. 
The plan was always to have two mascots on the walleye side. We did introduce Madonna in the early 2000s on the Mudhen side, and that success of having multiple mascots on the baseball side just transferred over really nicely into the hockey side. Bike is our walleye mascot. He came about with our inaugural season. We did debut that we would be having some sort of fish to pay homage to our Lake Erie and Maumee River in the Toledo area. A spike walleye is a really rough and rowdy young walleye and it just seemed to fit with our uh, hockey background. So Spike is a yellow walleye. He wears a little blue hockey helmet. We keep him in a walleye jersey at all times and he can alternate between boots and skates. For Spike, he skates through the giant Spike Tunnel of himself. Out onto the ice, he waves a big flag. He also holds the American flag during the national anthem. Catrick is Spike's feline friend. He's an extra large cat, blue in color. He wears a fishing vest, I guess you could call it, uh, with lures and everything to kind of play on Spike being his friend. He does wear big yellow rain boots so he can walk through the water to hang out with Spike. Catrick has his very own Mayhem on Madison that we do every single game, where Catrick gets a spotlight with a large drum and gets the crowd really excited. So Toledo chose the Mud Hen. It's a long-legged American coot bird that frequents marshes and swamp areas. Back when the team used to play at Bayview Park, they were right around all these marshes and swamplands where these birds frequented. So we took on the mud hen as our mascot. Madonna came in always with the cute little pinstripe baseball dress, and I don't think hers has changed much over the years. Muddy has always worn a mud hen's jersey for the most part in just different variations. What makes Muddy unique is he is one of the very few, if only, mascot that has his very own shoe deal. Muddy's game day routine, he catches our first pitches for us and he does sign every single ball that is thrown to him. He's got a really large glove that fits, fits his hand. It's kind of funny to look at. Each mascot does have a very unique personality that they own and make them who they are. Spike can be a little more rough, I would say, uh, with the fans in a fun way, kind of rousing them up, where Catrick's more of the big, loving cat that just wants to give the hugs and big waves all around. Muddy is a lot more of the fun, let's go see what trouble we can get into, similar to Spike, where Madonna's his, his really sweet friend that just wants to have a good time. She loves to dance with fans. She loves to give the hugs, and everyone seems to love her beautiful hair that she loves to show off as well. Our mascots always have Sharpies around and they're very happy to sign autographs. In the game as well, they also do have a designated autograph session. Fans can come on up too if you miss them walking around the concourse during the game. They're able to come and see them at a specific point within each game. The way that somebody becomes a mascot is we go through an intensive interview process. We just kind of see what their background is and then we dive into can you pick up on the mannerisms that we need and we ask our mascots to be for the fans and the community. Um, and can you create that fun, fanatical experience each and every day when you come in? Certain skills for each of these mascots. Spike, we do ask that he can skate. It's really important and a really crucial part of our game to have him skate through that spike tunnel and wave that flag on the ice. And our other mascots, we just ask that they can be flexible. They can go up and down on the ground with kids. You're up taking pictures, you're moving all around. Those that are actually in the suit, they just carry the energy. They understand that our mascots are there to entertain the crowd, bring those fanatical moments to each and every fan as if it was their first game. So they know that they do carry a little bit more responsibility when they put the suit on each and every day. The community has taken on these mascots as if they are their own. Everybody loves them just as much as we do. They're more of an ambassador of our brand and an ambassador of the Toledo community. They are always present on the concourse, on the field, up in the seating bowl with the fans. Being visible is just a really huge part of their popularity. The kids will run up, they will give them the biggest hugs. Some are very hesitant at first, but our mascots love to get down to their level and just let them know that it's okay, that we are nice and we want to be your friend. And then right after that, it's an instant change. These kids want to come back and all they want to see is the mascots. The importance of having mascots at these games, they are really there to create that experience, that fun environment 
for all fans of all ages. They're there to rouse the fans, get them out of their seats, cheering on the team. They bring the excitement. They bring, oh look, there's a mascot on the ice. Like let's cheer, bang on the glass for them, get their attention. I think without them there, there wouldn't be that same energy and same excitement at each and every game. We encourage fans of all ages, come on down to a hockey game, come on down to a baseball game, come meet Spike and Catrick, come meet Muddy and Madonna, get a high five, get a hug, get your picture taken, those memories last a lifetime.